welcome everyone to my 2020 end of year board game haul video. This is where I'm going to show you all the board games and card games I brought over the last year and quickly discuss each one, starting with the ones I first brought um, in January of last year. Now, we only really started getting into board games and card games seriously end of last year, and that starts with the very first one I brought properly, which of course is the Doom the Board Game. This is by Fancy Flat Games and Bethesda. It's a really great game. Um, I was on the fence this for a while, and the box art alone just really solid to me. I thought this was really cool. And I saw the back of the box, all the cool demon tokens and the marines. I thought I've, I've got to get this game. It was quite, it is quite pricey. It, it is expensive, but you get a lot in the box. You get a ton of marines, ton of uh, tokens, uh, demons, lots of cards, lots of scenarios, lots of replayability. Um, with it being one of the first major sort of high-end board games I brought, it was quite confusing to get the rules down. But after I learned it, it's a great game for two to five players. Yeah, I played it quite a lot. I haven't played it much lately because it's a, you know it's more of a multiplayer game and current events it's quite hard to get friends to play games like this. But it's definitely a recommendation if you like the Doom game, if you like sort of dungeon crawl and monster slayer game, they just hordes of enemies you gotta fight off, it's definitely a game for you. Um, the game brought after that, which was quite a contrast to that game, is a Chocobo Party Up. This is by Square uh, Enix. Um, this is where you control little Chocobos. You've got to go around the forest, bring them all back to your home. You have little cards you can use. It's really simple, and I really love the art style of this. It's really great detail on the cards and the tokens themselves, all the little wooden pieces you have with Chocobo feet on there. The dice are really nice as well. It's just a fun game, light-hearted. Um, if you like Final Fantasy, it's a really easy, quick game set up. It's quite a lot. It's quite a light-hearted game, good for families and kids to play too. Uh, after I brought that, I got Thanos Rising. This is by the OP Games or USopoly. Um, on the uh, Rising series, which you obviously have a main villain in the centre of the board, the cards go around it, and you use dice to slowly build up your army of recruiting characters and damaging villains. It's a really fun game, all artwork straight from the uh, MCU. It's pretty easy to play, it's pretty family friendly and if you're a fan of the MCU especially, it's really good to play. Um, next up, I brought Resident Evil 2, the board game. This game is by uh, SFG, Steamforge Games. It's uh, for 1-4 to four players. It's quite a heavy board game, it's quite, it's quite complicated. Um, Visually, the game looks quite <laughs> it looks quite bland. If you look at the the artwork there, it's very dark and murky, and you know it's kind of ugly looking. Um, but don't let it put you off the gameplay itself. Though. The gameplay is solid. There's um, great elements here from the get from the video game brought into the board game. Uh, item management, um, you know, where it's a fight or flight, where to run and hide, you know, finding keys, locked doors being lost in a dark area and it's it's a great game to play solo and in a multiplayer. Great boss fights in here too, lots of enemies and tokens. And it's great value, lots of expansions for it too. It's a really good value game to have. Next up we have the good old Aldrich Horror from Anti Flat Games, part of the Arkham Horror HP Lovecraft Cthulhu series. This was my first venture into the Arkham Files series um, with the uh, Lovecraft series of Fancy Flat Games and I love this game. I still like to play it now but the game alone, the core set you get so much replayability, you get a massive uh, board of the world map, and you get a great sense of end of world threat and try to stop these ancient ones going across the globe, collecting assets and solving mysteries and trying to stop them from waking up. Love the Dune Track at the top there, it gives this great impending sense of urgency and you know, end of world terror, great artwork, all grotesque creatures and monsters, always old fashioned 1920s setting weapons and items. And it's a really great game to play. Uh, even if you're not a fan of Lovecraft or, you know, that kind of horror idea, it's just a really fun, fun game about survival and mystery. And it's a great game to play with uh, other people. And it's a good game to play solo as well. Plenty of expansions for it too. Um, but poor set alone is definitely worth the value of money you get. I got this extremely cheap. I got this with a built-in wooden insert for about nineteen pounds, which is a bargain. Um, Next up, we have my first venture into the living card game territory with Marvel Champions. Um, I wasn't really sure about living card games. I wasn't really sure what they were. 
And I just like the idea of this game. I just thought that oh, it looked really nice. It's all really colourful straight from the comic books. Uh, it looks really nice to play. And I really like this game because at the time I got this, it was a good game to get because of the uh, the pandemic. A good, good amount of games I get were made for solo play. So games I got for solo play, especially this one, were really handy. And not just that, it's a really fun game. It has great challenge, great, great availability. Out of all living card games, you get a lot of value in the core box alone. You get five heroes, three villains, I think seven or eight modular sets, so and four aspects. So you've got so much playability in one box alone. Next up, we have Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, two to four players, a property deck building game. Um, I wasn't really sure about this at first. I thought, is it going to be very, any good? But surprisingly, it is actually a really addictive game. You basically play through all the films. You can play through all in a row, you can take bits out, choose a character, their own unique items, and you add villains and um, more items to the Hogwarts deck as you play through the films, key items from different ones. And each game you reset, you build up your deck based on what you purchase from the coins, try to attack villains and they get harder and harder. Sort of with just something like you know Draco Malfoy, then you work towards Dolores Umbridge, the Basilisk, up until Voldemort. And it's a really fun game. It's uh, kind of easy to get into. It's not too hard. It's great for families and kids. And even for people who are a bit older and just like the Harry Potter universe, a good deck building game. It's a really fun game to play. Next up we have Godzilla the card game. I haven't really played this game much, uh, really. It's a two-player game, two to four players. Uh, basically, you have a, a deck of cards. Basically, it uses the Chrono Clash system, where you sort of give pay using time, as then you give the player more time, this little turn clock thing, and you can uh, play cards. All the great cards from the Godzilla universe are here. You know, uh, King Ghidorah, Mothra, Rodan, everyone's here. There's lots of great items, all abilities. It's a little bit complex because there's a lot of symbols in the cards. Once you get the symbols down, it's really quite simple to play. And it's just a fun little game if you just want to build something. Really something that's part of the cards of the universe you want to play. It's, a, it's pretty good, pretty cheap. Um, replayability is kind of low though. There isn't that much in here. There's four sets of decks you can make. You can mix and match them a little bit, but there's only so much you can really play with those decks. But next up, we have Arkham Horror, second edition. Um, I brought this a lot after... I was just horror. Um, and I think like that kind of ruined it for you a little bit. I mean, much the lightest game, it has a great old style feel, the, the artwork on it is really uh, interesting, really unique feel to it. It's kind of similar to Aldrich Horror, but I find that a bit more fun to play. I find the goal on that a lot easier than the one on this one. Whereas this feels like it's chasing gates a lot of bit. There's a lot of monsters, a lot of cool items in this and cards. It's quite complicated, it's a big board filling kind of card game. But it's a very fun game to play. If you had this first when it came out, it's definitely worth getting. Find it cheap somewhere. It's got a great, it's got a great vintage nostalgic feel to the board itself. Next up, we have Harry Potter: Death Eaters Rising uh, from the OP Games. It's very similar to Faust Rising. There's enough differences here to warrant it if you have both. I mean, if you're going to pick one, depends what you like. If you like Harry Potter more, get this one. If you like MCU more, get Faust Rising. But if you have both and you really like both, it's definitely worth getting because there are some differences between the two the location cards. And the character abilities, attacking Voldemort to the end is very different. Obviously, there's no fancy cards in this one, so it's very different to a uh, Final Rising. But if you want something that's very different, it will feel a little samey in parts. So it depends how much you like the, like the uh, RP it comes from itself. Next up in the Fantasy Flight Games is Arkham Horror Final Hour. This is a sort of short, condensed down version of the board game where you have just a, a small board and you basically spawn monsters every turn and try and use the uh, cards you play to track them down and seal off the areas quick and try and uh, stop the ritual. And basically it's like a guessing game, and how many clues you get and tokens you get, you have to, make a, you have to sort of make a guess at the end, you have the symbols that match at the end. Um, compared to the other games in the Arkham series, it's probably the weakest one of the lot. I mean, it's not a bad game at all. It just doesn't have the same kind of theme as the other ones. It's a lot easier. Um, and a lot of the things are there that are part of the Arkham Files universe, but it's quite simple. It's not much to it really. It's, it's very. I mean, you haven't got much else to play. You want something short. If you want to play a game based on that universe with friends, and they haven't got time to set up a massive big Alice horror game with all the board and the rules, it's definitely something to recommend to them to play. Next up is one of my favourite games I brought last year, and that is Everdell. I love this game. It is so, so good. 
First impressions are it's a really cute, artsy game and it's probably a family game for kids because you've got the nice tree and the, the critters that are drawn there. But if you can look past the uh, really beautiful artwork, there's a really great game in here. Um, don't let that put it off at all. This is a really good work placement, resource management game um, where you basically have to build the best city in Everdell and get victory points. All the cards have great synergies, there's lots of strategies. You use the seasons to sort of generate what resources you want. You can sort of plan out what you're going to do. There's, different, there's a massive roster of cards. Different uh, cards work with each other. There's great strategies. You can go for the events. You can go for production high early on. You can go for the blue cards that synergize as well when you play stuff later on. You can go for matching cards that you can play for sort of three or something else. It's a one to four players. It's ages 14 plus. This is a game recommend to any age. It's such a fun game. It's a lot of value in the box. You get so many cards in your playability. The tree is really unique in it too, and all the little nice little resource tokens. It's just such a really, it's a really good game, one of the best I brought uh, last year. Next up, we have two living card games. We have Arkham Horror, the card game, one of the best card games you can find. On the highest rated ones on BoardGameGeek.com, it's won loads of awards. It's really, really good. Um, I had a sort on a relationship this game at first. Um, I had it, played it, enjoyed it. But I found the, uh, the fun wore off quite, quite early. I mean, the core set is great. You've got plenty of cars, there's three scenarios, plenty of some investigators, but I just got a bit bored. I got a few little expansions here and there, and I just couldn't really get into it again. But after a while, I eventually brought a full cycle. I know it's a lot of money, but you buy a full cycle, you get a full story, you get complete cards, you upgrade your character to go along, it has a great RPG feel to it. The story is great, the choices you make can affect the story as you play along. And it's one of the best special playable games I've had so far and I really love playing it and there's so much content for it coming out constantly that's really worth investing in. It's a, it is a money sink, like a lot of board games, especially living card games, they are money sinks, they do require a lot of money. But especially around now, you want something solid to play, you can really just invest in, just play and enjoy. Definitely recommend Arkham Horror the card game. Another one quite similar to that, a little bit older than that, is Lord of the Rings the card game. This too, a living card game, similar to Arkham Horror. The core set alone is okay. There's um, you know, three scenarios, a few heroes, some player cards, and it is fun. But I was enjoying it, but I thought I wanted more. And after the Arkham Horror the card game, I thought, right, I'm going to buy a full cycle. And it is just like Arkham Horror card game. There's plenty of cards, all this great lore of Tolkien's work. It's just all seeping with uh, quality and theme and style. And you can play for the Saga expansions too. You can play story events from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, right up to uh, you know from the Shire up until Mount Doom. And it's just really, really fun. Deck building this game is really fun. Um, again, a little money sink like Arkham Horror, but definitely worth the investment. Next up, we have a hidden gem: uh, Kick-Ass the board game. I'm a massive fan of the, the, the film and the comics, and I didn't know this game existed. And I brought it really cheap, and because it was so cheap, I thought it was going to be you know, pretty, pretty poor. But actually, it's jam-packed. I mean, the box is small, but it's really heavy. I mean, you get a massive board, lots and lots of tokens and cards. It's a little complex. The the system, how it plays. Once you get it down, though, picking one of the bad guys, you know, Red Mist, the motherfucker, and then um, going down, taking out minions and doing, you know, funny little tasks and that. Get your character stronger, like a little character board. It is a really fun violent game if you're a fan of kick-ass definitely recommend getting this game completely next up is one of the other best games i brought last year and that is disney villainous i was sort of on the edge of this game for a while like back and forth thinking is it worth buying is it going to be great but turns out it is one of the best games i've got um for two to four players you basically take on the role of a villain you have your own uh, board your own objective your own cards and your own fake cards you're basically the good guys going against you and each player will go around and turn order, try and get their own uh, goal, collecting tokens, playing cards, you know, different cards, different abilities, such as Prince John will be gaining money, so his cards are all about taxing people and playing traps and trying to trap the heroes, and some, someone, like, um, someone, like, someone like Captain Hook's goal will be trying to get Peter Pan, defeating him, and it's a really fun game, it's competitive, it's fun, everyone's got their own little goals to play, you can play fake cards like each other to slow each other down, for instance, you can play... Uh, heroes on Jafar, you can play like Aladdin on Jafar or Iago and try and stop him. It's a really great game. The expansions too are worth every penny. You get three uh, villains each, each expansion, so it depends on which ones you really like. I mean, personally, I like Yzma, she's really fun to play with. Next up, we have Harry Potter House Competition. Um, this is a 
strange game. Basically, it looks quite bland. I mean, the board is pretty bland. It just basically, it's like a big board of numbers, and there's not much to it really. But it's a really fun game. You get a big vial of the house cup with the different tokens in, little like gems for the house cup that you get to see in the film. And each one is basically like a big RPG game. You basically have to get your characters, you level them up, they do tasks, they do lessons. It's sort of like a workplace game too, going across the board, trying to get the, the goals you need for yourself. Like competitive too, it's, it's a really fun game. It's quite short because it's only seven rounds. It's pretty simple to learn. It has a lot of components and cards to it. So it's a lot of replayability. And it's uh, for the price you get, it's a great family game as well, good for kids. Anyone fan of the Harry Potter universe would love this game. Next up we have Marvel Villainous, which is similar to Disney Villainous, but Marvel Villainous instead. You have obviously Thanos, Hala, Ultron, Killmonger, Taskmaster. It's very similar to Disney Disney's Villainous, but obviously you have the Marvel Villains instead. So it's just a great variation of theme. Now I do recommend getting this and Disney Villainous if you like them both, because they, although they do play quite similar, each time you have someone new, a new character, a new villain, they all play, they all play very differently to each other. So all the core, the core gameplay elements are the same, but how the villains each play is really different from each other. And it's definitely worth getting to for, you know, it's really fun playing as Thanos trying to get all the Infinity Stones or um, Ultron trying to assemble into the ultimate Ultron AI. It's a really great game to get. Next up, we have Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. I really wanted Gloomhaven for a long time. I don't even know why. It's just this really big, cool, massive box that's in the shops at the top shelf, 100, 100 something pounds. And I thought, what is this game? And I was looking at videos and it was like a really cool RPG dungeon crawling game. And I wanted it, but I didn't want to pay the price. So Gloomhaven draws as a line. It's basically a condensed down version of that massive box. You get tons and tons and tons of content. It's all played from a scenario booklet. You've got plenty of enemies. There's four characters, a load of character cards. There's all the upgrading, the items, the attack decks, the enemy decks. Ethan is here to play basically a condensed down version as Gloomhaven. You can play standalone, it's its own game. There's 26 scenarios in this, there's plenty of content, or you can add as an addition to Gloomhaven itself. It's a really fun game for one to four players. It's great to play solo, multiplayer. It's a lot of strategy to it. The combat in this game is my favourite. It's really in depth, it's really, it requires a lot of strategy and thinking. How your character is, how you upgrade your character, what path you're going to take, what items you're going to bring to a scenario. And it's a really one of the best, best games I've played last year. It's Gloomhaven Just of the Lion. Next up, we have Marvel Legendary, a deck building game for 1 to 5 players, in which you must each choose a set number of heroes and then start off by assembling those heroes, fighting against a mastermind, which is basically a big villain, uh, fighting off henchmen, number of their schemes. And it's a really fun game. It reminds me a little bit of Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle, where you basically start off with not much, just a few shield agent characters, and then you've got to basically work towards getting stronger heroes. This game is great because it has such good synergy. All the heroes work with each other, it's good to see which, which ones you're going to pick and buy and add to your team. You know, they all have great boosts, you know, you'll, you'll just be playing through it and you'll just get certain combos and certain heroes just working. You know, it's, it's so satisfying to get that down just right. Great diff difficulty, not too hard. You can swipe difficulty up a little bit, it starts off quite easy. There's tons of value in it too, there's lots of, there's, you get I think four villains and a lot of heroes. Um, recommend buying the Dark City expansion there because it really fleshed out the, the board more because you have plenty more heroes to choose from, more villains. Um, I got this cheaper off a second-hand store, but came Dark City and Guardians of the Galaxy, so that's really fun with Thanos in too, and the Guardians are a great, great addition. It's really simple, it's really easy to learn. Um, I recommend it for any any age really, you could enjoy this game. You have a nice little board out there, everything's laid out for you, quite simple. And it's much like Harry Potter, it has a theme. If, if you have people who like Harry Potter, a deck game, they're going to like Legendary, it's very similar. Next up is one of the other best games I brought last year, and that is Terraforming Mars. Um, a game for one to five players. It's all sort of semi cooperative You basically work together to um, basically build life on Mars, make Mars habitable for life. And you have this really great board, and basically you do three parameters. Um, water level, oxygen level, and temperature. And you work together playing cards, and you have resource management and um, engine building. So slowly together you're going to better score, making Mars habitable for life, but at the same time getting your engine going so you can play cards faster and get more synergies and combos of cards. And the game ends when all parameters are met. Add up all your scores and see if you're the best. It's a really, really fun game, even for solo. Great multiplayer. It's very addictive. You get a lot of replayability in the box. Um, the, the idea just sounds quite bland, and at first I wasn't really sure about it, but once, once you start playing it, you start to get the idea down. You get so much replayability and value in the box. 
uh, alone. I definitely recommend this game enough. It is one of the best games I've played last year. Um, expansions, plenty for it, and it's really fun. Um, a little bit heavy, a little bit complicated, but with friends, it gets really addictive and competitive, and it's a really fun game to play with other people. Uh, another living card game here, Game of Thrones, the card game. Um, I have played much because it's two players, and I don't really fancy that paying all the expansions for it because I'm not really that, that into it. Um, I got it because basically I like Game of Thrones, and it was really cheap, and I won it on eBay, I didn't really realise. Um, but it is really good, it's got great artwork, um, a little bit complicated, it plays very differently from other loving card games, um, a little more competitive, you have sort of like, challenge, you challenge each other on intuition and combat and power, there are power wins, there's like plot cards, there's all the characters are here, I love, I love the idea of having all the factions, all the characters, the Greyjoys, the Starks, the Lannisters, um, all the cards, like all like the, the three dragons and having to, uh, Daenerys out, it feels really satisfying. And it's a great game to play if you have two people and you want something to get into and you love Game of Thrones universe. It's a fun game to have both of you. It's a little bit complicated, but you can't really play it solo. So two of more people who love Game of Thrones, recommend getting if you really like it. It's fun to contact out there as well to help increase your collection. Uh, next up we have another fantasy flat games, Arkham Horror Files series, uh, Aldersign, which is a sort of dice placement game where you have to basically use dice to solve adventures. They collect them, put all the signs and defeat the ancient one. And it's quite different from the other Arkham Horror Files series games. It plays differently, it feels differently. It's really unique. Um, I recommend this to people who aren't really that into the whole idea of the Arkham Horror Files series and like getting into all this mysteries and clues and ancient ones because it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a, it's its own kind of animal really. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, dice placement game and using your spells and your abilities to sort of control the dice and achieve goals. Um, it's a great game to play solo or multiplayer, um, and it's a good um, game to get. It's a good game to get people who are not into that sort of universe slowly into that universe. So we'll lure them in with this instead first. Next up, we have Brass Birmingham. Now this game I can't really tell you about because I've got no idea how to play it yet. I wrote it recently, and I'm still trying to get my head around the rules. It's quite confusing. Um, I've been watching some playthrough videos, because I'm playing solo, I have to, I have to use some kind of solo AI uh, programs to uh, sort of get it to work. Um, but I like the idea, it reminds me of Terraforming Mars a lot, it's about uh, resource management, work, you know, collecting your resources, getting victory points, working for the industrial area, um, set across Birmingham, which is good because it's close to me, and even my location's on the map, which is pretty, pretty weird to me really. Um, but once I get into this game more, I'd like to review more in depth, but I can't spoil it too, well, too much because I don't really know much about it yet really, so I can't really go into it too, too in depth. Um, next up we have uh, My Little Scythe. I basically I couldn't find Scythe anywhere and it's quite expensive and I couldn't get it. And I saw it on sale somewhere and I decided to get it and it's a really fun, really cute game. It's kind of like Everdell, it's got really great, colourful, vibrant artwork. But well, there's quite a bit of depth to it too. I mean, it's easy for kids to get into a family game, but with all these uh, sort of tasks to complete, the pie fights, the challenges, the achievements, you know, choosing where you want to go next, how you want to play your turn. There's a lot to it here. There's a lot more depth behind the scenes. So look past the cute, colourful artwork. Look past the cute little critters on the front. And you find a game here that's great for all ages too. To the, uh, continue on with the HP Lovecraft Cthulhu theme, we have Cthulhu Death May Die. This is by Cool Money or Not Games. They make us of Kick-Ass. It's, I love the box artwork. The box artwork alone made me want to buy this game. And it's a really, really fun game. It's um, All of the elements of uh, Lovecraft and Arkham Files, other games are there, such as the mysteries and mythos, say monsters, the sort of fight or flight response. This feels very different. It's a different kind of animal altogether because basically you're trying to, rather than stop the ritual itself and avoid the ritual, you want it to happen. You want to bring that H1 down to your level and beat it to death. So you basically it's more of like a sort of dungeon crawler Slaying the monsters, same kind of game, is to slay all the monsters quick. There's also different scenarios, different challenges and puzzles to work out on the way before it happens. Um, but you have lots of lots of value in this game. It's like, if it's eight characters, just get two big ancient ones, lots of nice tokens. The overall look, aesthetic and feel of this game is so unique. It's, it's such a good game to play. It's quite pricey, but rules-wise, it's quite simple, actually. Um, everything you need to know and do is the back of your character card. So it's a really great game for players who like that whole idea of HP Lovecraft. We want something different, some different kind of look and feel to the game. This is really one to recommend. 
And also, in our big box, we have Matches of Madness, second edition. This is the app-driven uh, horror ball game in which you must explore different mansions and locations, try and solve the mystery of what happened. It's a really unique game because although it's such a big game, it's part of the Arkham Horror Universe, I think it's one of the easiest ones to play because although the goals are always clear, everything you need to know what to do is on the app. You want to explore a location, press the app. You want to investigate something or look at something, press on the app, roll a dice, compare your skills. Uh, it's really fun, the atmosphere of this game is great with the app and the music, you can have this little lights down a little bit and some dim lit rooms, some candles, play with some friends, this plus boring spooky house and mansion. You reveal tiles as you go along, go through the different doors and talk to different characters, sort of mysteries, monsters and ghouls and ghosts will be after you all the time. And it's such a fun, thematic game. It's one of the most unique games I've ever played. Final, the final game I brought uh, to the end of last year was Mysterium. Uh, I heard this game, I wasn't really sure what it was about, I thought it was just a sort of horror game, kind of like Match to Madness kind of thing. But it's a really fun game, basically one of you plays a ghost given has been murdered, giving out visions of the players, who basically have to sort of play like a clue, Cluedo, and guess who their killer was, guess the character who killed them first, then the location, then the item, against the clock, you have seven hours, seven turns. And it's a... Uh, because it's quite easy to get into and the theme of it, if you have the players who want to play a spooky game like Halloween, it's a really fun game to play, um, really easy to learn. It's basically about guessing, getting clues, insight, and the ghosts can't talk, they sort of like knock or go forward if they get the right answer. Players just for themselves what the vision means, if they think it's the right one. It's a really addictive game, if anyone's fans of sort of horror elements and that sort of guessing game like that, it's a really good game to have. And that is it for my end of 2020 uh, game haul video. Any questions about any of the games you've seen, if you want to see any playthroughs, any reviews, any videos, if you want to look more in depth, let me know in the comments. Any games you thought I should have brought, anything on the list you like or wish you had, let me know. I uh, look forward to more videos soon, such as more movie reviews, Arkham Horror content when I get that, Marvel Champions, Lord of the Rings playthroughs. That's it for this video, leave a like, subscribe if you can, I would appreciate that, and thanks for watching.